and he's going to introduce his wife but ladies and gentlemen i want you to know that we have a man in our midst glory to another and today amen do me a favor just for one behind you one in front of you on your left on your right shake somebody with a smile and tell that person grace 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 more grace more grace more grace more grace Grace will salute you. Grace in the house. Grace in the office. Grace in traffic. Grace in the market. Grace in your bedroom. Grace in the school. Somebody shout grace! Now, I've discovered that the closer you are to a man that is carrying grace, the more the grace that rubs off on you. Whatever you celebrate, you attract. And thank God for the field marshal of grace that we have as a covering. Come on, let's celebrate Papa. And let's celebrate Mama. Amen. Papa, my father taught me to give a man a rose flower when he's alive to smell it. And not to give him praises when he's gone. Whatever you will do for a man to celebrate him, do it while he can enjoy it. And Papa will want to say, not many fathers can do what you have just done for Henry. I have a problem in my generation. That problem is that we have fathers who look at potential sons as rivals. And instead of projecting them, they suppress them. But you are different. You are just different. We love you, Papa. We love you. We love you. Henry, I think the grace has already started with you. Make sure you give me one CD. I will take one with 10,000. Just 10,000. And I will say, whatever you have done to attract this, don't stop. Increase it. Keep doing it. And if you envy him, sorry. A whole lot of things has happened that I said in the first service. He has met the right man. He has received help for an assignment. He is placed at the right place. He is right here on time. And look at him attracting favor and kindness. God has already started answering your prayer. Everyone inside this church today, August will bring answers to your prayers. You will not struggle to succeed. You will not struggle to fulfill your assignment. God will send you hell. God will send you hell. Let me hear you shout grace. Oh my God. I celebrate you. I celebrate you. More so, I celebrate word of life. I celebrate having papa as my papa has done a lot of things to my cv
preaching in word of life has given me class. Hello. As big, my father put a blessing upon me, one of those days he will lay hands on me and speak. And he said, your blessings will be as big as you are. Hello. And that is what I carry. I am a double barrel, two generation pump action. Praise God. What a wonderful service. If you don't know how to laugh, you better go home today and start rehearsing. Because laughter is visiting you in this August. Laughter is visiting your house. Laughter is visiting your father. Laughter is visiting your mother. Laughter is visiting your children. Somebody is about to laugh and dance. And jump and smile. All at the same time. Let me hear you shout grace. Take up your Bible with me. We started in the morning service with powered by grace. Now let's look at just two scriptures. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. My brother, help me and read from the King James. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. Paul was instructing Tim and he said something to him. Second Timothy Second chapter Timothy. 2 verse 1. Yes. 2 verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, my son, specifically addressed to someone, not to everyone. Be strong in the grace. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Oh my God. Be strong. If you will have strength anywhere, let it be in the grace that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. Therefore, therefore, as ye abound in everything. Now, take note of this. As ye abound, as you live, as you dwell, as you find yourself in everything in this life. In faith. Now, look at the first one. In faith, in what you believe. In your Christian life, he's saying as long as faith is involved, as long as you believe God, an utterance, if you have anything that has to do with speaking, a knowledge, now take it easy my brother, if you have anything to do with utterance, in speaking to your children, in speaking to your husband or wife, as a pastor, as a singer, as an instructor, as a lecturer, as a manager, if you have anything to do with speaking to somebody, that's the second one. And the third one is what? A knowledge. If you have anything to do with learning, whether you are collecting or distributing, if you have anything, if you are found in anywhere where knowledge is required, that is number three. Uh -huh. And in all diligence, in all diligence, in all hard work, in everything that requires you to use your energy to do. That's number four. Uh -huh. And in your love to us, in your relationships, in everything that has to do with communication with another, whether husband or wife, and wife, or parents and children, or brother and sister, or neighbors or workers and their manager, or pastor and members, if you have anything to do with relationship. Yes? See that you are bound in this. Ah, see. Also. Now, easy. See. Be careful to note. See, behold. Make sure. Make sure that ye are bound. Make sure. A 
abound means to be in excess. Overflow. You have more than sufficient. Make sure in all you do, you abound in this grace also. That is to say that a man can be involved in things and yet grace is not there. Make sure that you abound in this grace also. Lift up your two hands to the Lord this morning. Make just one prayer. Lord, may your grace be upon me. I give you one minute to pray that prayer. God, in the name of Jesus, may, may your grace be, be upon, upon me, me O oh God. In Lord, everything. In everything, oh God. Open your mouth. It's simple, in but it's powerful. In grace, in the ministry. grace will, will overrule God your labor. Grace, oh God, in my will overrule in your my mistakes. Oh God, grace will teach you what you do not know. Oh God, even Lord, in my business, in the name of Jesus, let grace overwhelm me. Let grace, oh God, abound. In every area of my life. Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord. As you make us better than what we are. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You can say better, amen. Amen. Kindly take your seat as I address what I call destroyers of grace. Today, across our nation we have people that are running after miracles and not after the God of miracles. We have people that are moving around and running after men but please run after the word of God. We are raising people across our churches that are looking for signs and wonders but are not looking for the knowledge they need to live right. It's one thing for you to get grace. It's another thing for you to keep it and it's another thing for you to use it. I've gotten into a dimension of grace and God began to open my eyes to know that grace makes demands. I call that the demands of grace. That's not for today. I have also come to know that grace can be activated. It can be provoked to begin to do things. It's been there but it's not been working but you can make it work, activating grace. That's another dimension. But this day, let's deal with the destroyers of grace so that you can understand that there are things in your life that you need to watch out for. Number one is pride. Pride. Do you know that every blessing is a gateway to pride? Every blessing attracts pride. And you have to be careful to remain humble in the place of your blessing. Anything can make you proud. A new blackberry can make you begin to answer call in church. So that people can see it. And when you come out, you want to show it to people. And you are looking at the one there. You are looking for those that have 3310. And you want to say, are you still using this phone? Even when there's no call, you bring it out so that people will see what you have in your hand. Brazilian hair can make you proud. And that is why you stay one place, you won't keep your head one place. You'll be shaking it like Agama Lisa. <laughs> A new shoe can.
can make you urinate in church four times before service is over. Because somebody has to see what you want to church. Pride. 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 Pride will make you look down on another person. Let me tell you that whatever position God has placed you is just the grace of God. And what God has done for you, he can also do for another person. Have you ever seen a sister that got admission into the university and went to school and came back after the first semester? How she handles those that she took jam with that we are not able to get the results. It relates with them as somebody whose level has changed. We have class now. Just that you travel to South Africa, that is why nobody will rest. Some of us pastors, just one miracle that God performs, nobody will hear again. You now become the Alpha and the Omega. Hear me today. Anything you have in life is a gift. For every good and perfect gift comes from above. The problem is not being blessed. The problem is, will you still be the same person when you are blessed? Will you still be doing that same assignment for God when he increases your level? Can you still be in church and handle your responsibility and keep your protocols outside? when God positions you there. That is the problem we have. I don't know about the Niger Delta, but where I come from in the south, when a man makes little million, he becomes a god. He doesn't listen to anybody. No priest can stay over him. He gives a priest money. He determines what it is used for. Oh my God. Pride. Pride. But do you know what happens? There are people who should be blessed. But God decides to leave them where they are because if they get that blessing, they will take the position of God. The Bible says, He will lift the humble, but He will do what? Resist the proud. Take note. Lifting and resistance require energy. Now, what it means is that, sorry, sir, just sit down, is that he needs to rise. And when he rises, there's a shining. Arise and shine. Arise means get up. It means change your position. It means do something. Now, he needs to rise, but then for him to rise, he still requires energy. But when he's lifted, his energy is not required. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, if I have to lift him to rise, it's easy and faster without more struggle. And then he will shine. Now, sit down. But because he, he comes to this level where he's asking God to put him, pride will come in. And instead of going to that there, the same energy that God would have used to raise him, he will use it to resist him. Now, rise. rise. He will put in efforts to rise, but he cannot. Because pride will block his access to the power that will lift him up. Pride will remove grace from your life. It will suspend help in time of need. Pride. Pride makes you look at the person by your side and decide whether you will sit by that person's side or not. Pride. Wherever pride has come into your life from, may God remove it from you in the name of Jesus. Number two, wrong association will destroy the pride, the, the, the level of grace in your life association. There are people that are not compatible with your destiny. They may have been there yesterday, but they don't fit in today. 
There are people that you related with yesterday they were useful, now they are useless. It doesn't mean you dump them. It means that you need to move on and not hold on to them because they become excess luggage. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Association. The people you move with is even as a pastor, you don't just move with everybody. I, I read my scripture. God taught me a way to read the scripture. I read it the way it's written and I read it backwards. It helps me to understand. Let me explain. The Bible will say, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Read it backwards. Do not forgive us as we do not forgive those who trespass against us. Then you will understand. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long and it shall be well with you. Backwards. Dishonor your father and your mother that your days may be short and the short one will not be well. Now, Psalm 1, verse 1 says, Blessed is he that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, or seated in the seat of the scornful, or walketh in the way of sinners. Backwards, cursed is he that walketh in the counsel of the ungodly, or seated in the seat of the scornful, or walketh in the way of sinners. That tells you that there are people that are cursed just by the reason of association. Am I talking to somebody today? There are people you don't go and sit down with. You wave to them and go. They visit you. You tell them, I'm going somewhere so that they don't sit down. Eagles don't come to banquet with chickens. For God's sake, you are an eagle. You are an eagle. The only one that can fly and look at the sun. You are an eagle. You don't perch with people. You don't perch where chickens perch. You fly above mountains. You don't run around mountains. Somebody is flying from this place today. Grace to fly is coming on someone here today. If you are the person, let me hear you shout, Grace! Grace! Change your association. There are certain associations that are destiny roadblocks. They block you. Number three, sin, sin will block the access of grace. Sin is sin, no matter who commits it. Sin, how can you have Bible in your handset and you also have blue film in your handset? How, the same handset. How can it work? The same handset, you're reading Bible. And you go back home in your privacy. The same handset, you open your media and you're watching Blue Film. If you were God, what will you do? See, it's not about who you are in church. It's about who you are where nobody sees you. Who are you? You lie without blinking your eyes. Even some of your testimonies are lies. Sin is sin. Hear me today. Sin is not just about the things you have done. It's about the things you are supposed to do which you refused to do. It's about instructions from God which you are supposed to perform and you did not perform it. It's not just about what you have done. It's about the things we are supposed to have done and the Spirit of God said, do this, do that. Please do this, do that. And you ignored it. Sin. Sin. In your system, in the office, in your system, what kind of things are inside your system? Sin. What is that thing that makes you come to God and you will keep confessing and confessing? How long will you confess it? Why not stop it once and for all? Discipline. Thank God for the mercies of God. Thank God for the mercies of God.
come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy. Mercy will speak for somebody here today. But the Bible asked a question, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And he said, God forbid. Somebody needs to take a drastic decision today that I'm not going back to this mess again. You can't get back to masturbation again. You can't get back to pornography again. You can't get back to cultism again. Yeah, now, listen to me. If they told you you will die, your life is nobody's hands. Come out from there, nobody will touch your life. Let that fear leave you today that if you leave that court, they will kill you. No man has the power to take your life. For when you run into Christ, you are safe. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. You have to deal with God before you deal with me. Come out of that court. They will take your destiny for a temporary pleasure. It's not worth it. He came that we may have life and have it abundantly. Somebody needs to take a decision against this mess. This thing that nobody knows about but is disturbing you. Mercy will speak for you today in the name of Jesus. Number four. Rebellion to spiritual authority will destroy grace. Rebellion or dishonor to spiritual authority. Last year when we were here, I heard Dr. Mike Mudok say something. He said, when you honor a man, God will lift you. He said, the honor you give to a man attracts the grace of that man upon you. When you dishonor and disrespect and disobey spiritual authority, hear me, you have a problem. There are four classes of spiritual authority. One is priesthood. The other one is your husband. The other one is your parents. And the other one is your community or social leader. If you belong to protocol, there's a head of protocol who represents the authority. Disobedience to him is disobedience to spiritual authority and the level of grace will terminate from your life. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? In the ushering department, there's a head, there's a chief usher, there's the person in charge. That person represents Papa. Dishonor to that person's instruction is this honor to Papa. We need to learn discipleship. Somebody must be a covering. You must be accountable to someone. Every woman that is here, hear me. Your husband is a spiritual authority, not just a husband. It's not a function of his bank account. It's not a function of how good he looks. It's a function of the position and office that God has given to him to be. As the husband is the head. As Christ is also the head. So every time you look at your husband at a point, you say, go and sit down. Some women will look at their husband and say, shut up your mouth. You are signing a contract with disgrace. And that is why arthritis and rheumatism will visit you. And you are, we have, we delivered a message here on the Father's blessing. You can't go far. Hear me? Papa said something that provoked thoughts. And every time, I don't joke with your words. I go back and study and try to know what God is saying. And try to improve myself on that. After preaching on the Father's blessing, Papa said something. He said, 
You can do without your biological father, but you can't do without your spiritual father. Your biological father represents where you are coming from. Your spiritual father represents where you are going. And then I discovered that in the Bible. Ephesians chapter 6, read verse 1. I show you something. Ephesians chapter Ephesians 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 1. And verse 1. Yes. Children. Children. Obey your parents in the law. Take note. Obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. For this is right. Read verse 1. Honor, honor thy father and mother. Honor thy father and mother. Which is the first commandment. That was promise. the one that Moses was talking about. Yes. With promise. With a promise. Verse 3. Yes. That it might be well with thee. That it may be well with thee. And thou mayest live long. You on may the earth. live long on earth. The first instruction is obey your parents in the Lord. It's not talking about your biological parents. It's talking about the people that instruct you in God. Your spiritual covering, your spiritual mentor. And then after that, he started talking about your biological father. Honor your father and your mother. Now look at the responsibilities. To your biological father, you owe them honor. But to your spiritual father, you owe obedience. Somebody must be instructing you for where you are going. Who is speaking into your life? Fathers have immunity. If you are a young person here and you are complaining about your father, listen, receive understanding. Read verse 4. I show you something. And ye fathers, ye fathers, provoke not your children provoke to wrath. No, not your children unto wrath. Yes. But bring them up. But bring them up. In the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now look at this. The immunity of fatherhood. Honor your father and your mother. That your days may be long and it shall be well with you. That means if you dishonor them. Your days will be short and it will not be well. But to fathers, provoke not your children. But there is no condition. God didn't add anything. That means they can mess you up and still go free. So it's not about complaining, my father did this, my father did this. He did this, he did that. Leave him and God. He has some level of spiritual immunity. If you take up revenge against him, God will still punish you. Even when he did the wrong thing. Am I talking to somebody today? Yes, sir. Receive knowledge. I read that scripture. I said, what? So be careful how you stand against the spiritual authority. Listen, it's not about what you do here. It's about what you do in your house, in your private place. How do you talk? about your spiritual covering how do you relate with people when they talk about your spiritual covering hear me every time you rebel against a spiritual authority hear me grace will drop god give us grace in the name of jesus Amen. number five wrong Destiny words and statements will destroy grace. Mind how you talk. If there's anything you will learn in word of life, you must learn that you don't talk anyhow. You just don't talk anyhow. You don't talk based on circumstances that you see. You talk by faith and address the things you see and speak of those things that are not as if they are. Be careful how you reply. These days they tell you, how are you? How are the children? And one woman will answer, it is just hunger. That is why hunger will not leave your family alone. The Bible says, when they say, there is a casting down. My own people have a, a different language. Mine will say, there is a lifting up. 
that means while the people are going down, there are still people that are rising up. You will be one of them. No adversity will bring you down. Amen. Where people fall, you will be rising from Amen. there. What makes people cry will bring laughter to you. Amen. I am talking to somebody right yes, now. Sir. That pit will not swallow you. You are coming out of that pit with yes, a testimony. Sir. Let me hear you shout, Grace! Yes. Tap the shoulder of your neighbor and tell that person, watch your mouth. Job said, how forcible are right words. Be careful what you speak. And be careful how you answer. I was in my house and I wanted to, to go out and somebody was in my house. We live in a two-story building. And the person in my house said, Daddy, are you going down? I said, no. He said, but you are going out. I said, yes. He said, you are going down. I said, no, I'm going downstairs. Going downstairs and going down are not the same thing. Can you tell me I'm going down? And I will say yes. If two agree on anything, no be me and you. Praise God. We go to number ingratitude. Ingratitude blocks the flow of grace. Ingratitude. Oh, Proverbs 17, 13. Help me and read. If possible, also, we read it in King James. We read it in New Living Translation. Read in King James. And then on the screen, we will have it in New Living Translation. King James, yes. Yeah. Proverbs 17, 17 verse 13. 13. Yeah. Whosoever rewarded evil for good, if somebody has done good to you, evil and shall you reward with evil, yes, evil shall not depart from his house. Evil shall never depart from his house. Evil shall never depart from his house. New Living Translation says, evil shall never leave his house. Living Bible says a curse is upon his home. That's living Bible. A curse is upon his home. One person is the ungrateful person. All the people in the home suffer it. Ingratitude. This is where we have members that are supposed to move forward. They will move forward. Because the same pastor that prayed for them, helped them, was fasting for them, is the same that they are stabbing at the back. The same person that housed you, clothed you, after some years you have become a man of your own, is the same person you are fighting. You have no business with grace. Disgrace will be your partner. Sometimes some of us, Papa taught me something. I don't know if you will remember. Several years ago, because I have the habit of coming to you and ask questions and study. And I asked, what do you do about places you go to and you minister to people with your heart and when you're going, they leave you empty? Some of them will swindle you. Some of them will tell you stories and they can't appreciate you. What do you do? Papa told me, he said, Every man of God must fight a bat battle of bitterness. Those you work for and they do not appreciate what you have done. He said, God takes you some places to work and takes you to another place to pay you. Mm. Mm. There are places if they call me back, except God comes to my bedroom and says, you must go. I won't go there. I will not. Because they abused me and messed me up. There was one I went to in Joss. Papa, they gave me honorarium. It will shock you to know that the elders that brought the honorarium split it into three, gave me one and shared two. If not that I called the man of God and say, I will not leave your church with grief. Look at what you have done. My heart is bitter. Please. I will not reject it, but what you have done is not good. Then he said, what happened? That was how it was discovered. 
Because naturally, I would have taken it and I will go and nobody will ask questions. And they are supposed to be elders. Those of you that handle church money, when nobody is there, be very careful. One day, monkey go go market. You know, go return. Ingratitude. Be grateful. My wife woke me up one early morning and I said, Daddy, I want to say something. Something is disturbing me. I said, can't it wait till daybreak? She said, no. It's important I tell you now. If I say it now, I can sleep. I said, uh-uh. Ah, ah. What is this? I'm not traveling. I'm around. He said, no, I want to say it now. Then I sat up. And then she got up from her bed, came to my side of the bed, and then knelt down. I said, I just want to tell you that if I didn't marry you, I don't know what would have happened to me. I thank God that I married a man like you. Then I had to sit well. I said, repeat it again. Repeat it. No matter how bad you think your husband is, there is something good about him that has benefited you. That is it. That is it. No matter how bad you think, if you think you married the worst woman, <laughs> may God not give you the opportunity to go to another. Then you will understand that you married an angel. As you see them, sometimes their mouth no good, but their heart is good. But change your mouth. Praise God. I believe I'm talking to somebody today. Number, number seven, unfulfilled and broken vows will terminate grace. Unfulfilled and broken vows. If you make God a promise, keep it. Right here this morning, you saw Papa talking to doctor and he was writing a check. And the doctor said, no, it is what I vowed last week. That is principle. That is integrity. If you think nobody knows, God does not forget. He said, don't tell an angel it was a mistake. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 from verse 4 to 6. When you make a vow, keep it. For God is not interested in fools. Pay your vow and do not tell the temple messenger it was a mistake or God will turn his back on the works of your hands. You made a promise, God, if you do this, I will bring one car. God has done it. And you went to price car. You said, God, manage goods. God has done it and you forgot. You can't go to a shrine and make a vow and forget. Disaster will remind you. This place is bigger than any shrine. Don't mess around with the vows you make here. Even the ones that nobody recorded. Angels have recorded them. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Some of us, the grace is there, but to manifest it, these things have blocked it. God will give you grace in the name of Jesus. Number... Number eight, ancestral covenants and demonic manipulations can block the access of grace. Ancestral covenants and demonic manipulations. They can do things. They can mess around. They can, they can do things. That's why you need a spiritual covering. That's why you need to do things that can help you and you can stand. Like we said yesterday, Eliezer prayed, Oh God of my master Abraham, because he was located under a man with a covenant. Listen to me. Your biological family may be polluted, but your spiritual family can secure your destiny. Your spiritual family can bring you to a place where your biological family cannot take you to. That's why you don't joke with church. You don't joke with fellowship. We don't, you don't joke with the people God has placed over you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? 
a sister in Enugu working in a car manufacturing company, suddenly her ogre wanted to become the general manager because the tenure of the general manager had expired. They knew the new general manager. And this lady was working under one of the directors. And the man came and decided to get into a court because he must become the general manager by all means. To a point that this man will come to his office and knock on his own door, make incantations, open the door, and he will enter with his back. And one morning he came and told our sister and said, you need to resign or I give you a sack letter. Take one. You can't be praying in this office. You need to get out so that I can get those that will work with me. The sister came back and told the husband. The husband ran to my office and said, Daddy, look at what is happening. They want to sack my wife. And the husband said, if my wife loses her job, my children will stop school. It is her salary that pays the school fees. And I told him, I said, bring the name of that man. Let's go to the court of heaven for three nights. You say he entered court and he goes into his office with back. I said, no problem. Let's go to the court of heaven for three nights and plead our case. Three nights we fasted and prayed. The first night, the second night, the third night. The spirit of God came down in prophecy and asked us three questions. Number one, do you not know? That his confidence is in the oracle that he has visited. And when men go to oracles, they get bold. Number two, the question came, do you not know that it takes an oracle to destroy an oracle? And then number three, he asked, what have I made you? Are you not my oracle? Go and deal with it. The battle is already won. Listen, it's not about what you are doing. It's about what Jesus has already done. That is what grace is all about. You don't need extra. He has already secured it. I told the sister, enough of the prayers. Tomorrow I'm coming to your office. She said, for what? I said, we need to meet ourselves. Nine in the morning I came. They said the man is not there. I left. I said, when he comes, call me. Ten, one hour later, he came. And he entered the normal way. And when I came back, I told this sister, go and tell your ogre that one man wants to see him. Don't call my name. She went in and told the ogre. Ogre said, give him paper. Let him feel. And say why he wants to see me. The sister came out with paper. And gave to me. He said, daddy, please. He said, you should feel paper. I said, shut up. Oracle, they feed paper for your village. I said, go and tell your ogre, tell him one man wants to see him. She went back and told the man. The man became angry. He was shouting from the office. Who is that stupid man? I mean, they call stupid. Go and call him. Let him come in. Let me see him. Because his heart is in the oracle he has gone to. And the sister came out shaking. He said, Daddy, please, you can go in. I said, sit down. She sat down. I knocked on the man's door. As I was knocking, I started my own incantation. I knocked on the door. The man said, come in. Come in. You can sense the anger. I opened his door and I entered with my back. They say he enters with back. I turned and faced the man. The man stood up. He said, who are you? I said, shut up. Sit down. He was looking at me. I said, will you sit down? The man sat down. Fear was all over him. I said, your secretary is under my covering. If you touch her, you will die. He was looking at me. I said, do you hear me? If you touch her, you will die. He, he didn't say a word. I opened the door, Papa. I left with my back. <laughs> Two weeks later, the man lost his job. Who will say it and it will come to pass? When Jehovah has not spoken, a thousand will fall on your left side. Ten thousand will fall on your right side. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress 
my God, in him will I trust. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Somebody shout grace. Grace. I don't care the conglomeration of witchcraft. Hear me. His name is called Emmanuel, God with us. Everyone who has decided to be an obstacle, grace will make him a stepping stone. Amen. Sit down, let's round this thing up. Let me just take one more. Destroyers of grace. Absence from a place of responsibility. When you absent yourself from your place of responsibility, you have resigned from the grace for that assignment. Don't leave your position because nobody appreciated your effort. One day God will show you. You are not in church to serve man. He said, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. For they that come to him must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There's a reward. Let no man pay you. A man will pay you by his abilities. Let God pay you. When God pays, he pays in areas. Don't leave your place of assignment because somebody is envious of you. Don't leave your place of assignment because somebody gossiped with your name. Don't leave your place of assignment because somebody did not appreciate what you are doing. Your master who called you is taking records. And one day he will pay. Let's bow down our heads in prayer. Oh, can you just lift up your hands? Open your eyes, lift up your head. Lift your head, open your eyes, look at me. This was not in my note, but God just dropped it in my spirit and let me say it. He said that disobedience to spiritual instruction will block grace. The one I mentioned was spiritual authority. But there are instructions that God gives to you in your private place. As you sit down here, there are instructions that God tells you, do this do that. Papa was saying, give to this young man. Encourage him. But where you are sitting down, the Spirit of God tells you, there is something else you need to do for him. Do it. God speaks to you where nobody hears. And remember, he will only speak two times and leave you to make up your mind. He will not nag you. God wakes you up in the night and say, this week, go on midnight prayers. God tells you, in let God arise, position yourself to take care of the logistics for this man of God. Bless this man. Bless this pastor. Bless it. Nobody knows. God positions you and wakes you up and tells you, today, don't leave your house. Stay indoors. Spiritual instruction. Every time you disobey it, grace will rupture. God will tell you, start this. Start doing this. Enter this department and start working there. And you say no. When you disobey a spiritual instruction, you terminate grace. Rise on your feet, everyone. You're going to make just one prayer. Lord, everything that will destroy grace in my life, take it away from me. I don't know how you're going to pray, but I leave you to your God and this altar today. God! Is it pride? Is it ingratitude? Are my ears deaf to your instructions? Have I disobeyed authority before me? Father, in whichever way, 
grace in my life is being destroyed. Whatever is this reason, let me leave this church today free from anything that will stop grace in my life. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. This is a sober time. Witches are not your problem. Wizards are not your problem. Your problem is that you are involved in pride. Your problem is that you don't hear God. Your problem is that you are doing nothing. God, take me to the place. want to be a vessel you can use open your mouth and pray if you must get anything get grace get grace get grace draw me close to you sing it sing it sing it never let me go at a time in your life you saw grace but now what is happening to you something is wrong you can't attract the favor you are used to attract something is wrong touch me one more time oh god I just want to be more like you. Jesus. No one else will be more like you. Oh my God. No one else can take your place. Oh, give yourself to love me. Oh yes, Lord. someone that sin has ruptured the grace in your life you know it sin is sin you know you are not where you should be because of this thing that keeps dropping you back and today you want to say Reverend Don pray for me I need to overcome this besetting sin I can be better than what I am but something keeps pulling me back and you want to say today I take a decision to come in contact with that grace and I must move forward. If you are like that, can you take a step forward to this altar? God is about to do something. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Tell the person by your side, excuse me. Let him give you a chance. Just take a step. Take a step. Move forward to the front here. God is about to release something into your life. Come on, come on, come on. Go ahead with that song. Go ahead with that song. Keep coming, keep coming. Mahando Shadarabayada. Therefore, therefore, as he abound in everything. Now, take note of this. 
as you abound, as you live, as you dwell, as you find yourself in everything in this life. In faith. Now, look at the first one. In faith, in what you believe in your Christian life, he's saying as long as faith is involved, as long as you believe God, an utterance, if you have anything that has to do with speaking, a knowledge. Now, take it easy, my brother. If you have anything to do with utterance, in speaking to your children, in speaking to your husband or wife, as a pastor, as a singer, as an instructor, as a lecturer, as a manager, if you have anything to do with speaking to somebody, that's the second one. And the third one is what? A knowledge. If you have anything to do with learning, whether you are collecting or distributing, if you have anything, if you are found in anywhere where knowledge is required, that is number three. Uh huh. And in all diligence, in all diligence, in all hard work, in everything that requires you to use your energy to do, that's number four. Uh huh. And in your love to us, in your relationships. In everything that has to do with communication with another, whether husband or wife and wife, or parents and children, or brother and sister, or neighbors, or workers and their manager, or pastor and members, if you have anything to do with relationship, yes, see that you are bound in this. Ah, see also. now, easy. See, be careful to note. See, behold, make sure. Make sure that ye abound. Make sure abound means to be in excess. Overflow. You have more than sufficient. Make sure in all you do, you abound in this grace also. That is to say that a man can be involved in things and yet grace is not there. Make sure that you abound in this grace also. Lift up your two hands to the Lord this morning. Make just one prayer. Lord, may your grace be upon me. I give you one minute to pray that prayer. God, in the name of Jesus, may, may your, your grace be, be upon, upon me. me, O God. In Lord, everything. In everything, oh God. Open your mouth. It's simple, in but it's powerful. In grace in the ministry. Grace that will overrule your labor. Grace, oh God, in my heart, will overrule your mistakes. Marriage. Oh God, help Grace will teach you what you do grace. not know. Oh God, even Lord in my business. In the name of Jesus, let grace overwhelm me. Let grace, oh God, abound. In every area of my life. Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord. As you make us better than what we are. And he's going to introduce his wife. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that we have a man in our midst. God. Glory to another. And today. Amen. Do me a favor, just four. One behind you, one in front of you, on your left, on your right. Shake somebody with a smile and tell that person, grace, grace, grace. More grace. More grace. More grace. More grace. Grace will salute you. Grace in the house. Grace in the office. Grace in traffic. Grace in the market. Grace in your bedroom. Grace in the school. Somebody shout, Grace! Now, I've discovered that the closer you are to a man that is carrying grace, 
the more the grace that rubs off on you. Whatever you celebrate, you attract. And thank God for the field marshal of grace that we have as a covering. Come on, let's celebrate Papa. And let's celebrate Mama. Amen. Papa, my father taught me to give a man a rose flower when he's alive to smell it. And not to give him praises when he's gone. Whatever you will do for a man to celebrate him, do it while he can enjoy it. And Papa will want to say, not many fathers can do what you have just done for Henry. I have a problem in my generation. That problem is that we have fathers who look at potential sons as rivals. And instead of projecting them, they suppress them. But you are different. You are just different. We love you, Papa. We love you. We love you. Henry, I think the grace has already started with you. Make sure you give me one CD. I will take one with 10,000. Just 10,000. And I will say, whatever you have done to attract this, don't stop. Increase it. Keep doing it. And if you envy him, sorry. A whole lot of things has happened that I said in the first service. He has met the right man. He has received help for an assignment. He is placed at the right place. He is right here on time. And look at him attracting favor and kindness. God has already started answering your prayer. Everyone inside this church today, August will bring answers to your prayers. You will not struggle to succeed. You will not struggle to fulfill your assignment. God will send you hell. God will send you hell. Let me hear you shout, Grace! Oh my God. I celebrate you. I celebrate you. More so, I celebrate word of life. I celebrate having Papa as my Papa has done a lot of things to my CV. Preaching in word of life has given me class. Hello. As big, my father put a blessing upon me, one of those days he will lay hands on me and speak. And he said, your blessings will be as big as you are. Hello. And that is what I carry. I am a double barrel, two generation pump action. Pray. Uh, uh. What a wonderful service. If you don't know how to laugh, you better go home today and start rehearsing. Because laughter is visiting you in this August. Laughter is visiting your house. Laughter is visiting your father. Laughter is visiting your mother. Laughter is visiting your children. Somebody is about to laugh and dance. And jump and smile. All at the same time. Let me hear you shout, Grace! Take up your Bible with me. 
We started in the morning service with powered by grace. Now let's look at just two scriptures. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. My brother, help me and read from the King James. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. Paul was instructing Tim and he said something to him. Second Timothy Second chapter Timothy. 2 verse 1. Yes. 2 verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, my son, specifically addressed to someone, not to everyone. Be strong in the grace. Be strong in the grace. That is in Christ Jesus. Oh my God. Be strong. If you will have strength anywhere, let it be in the grace that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 7. Let me tell you that whatever position God has placed you is just the grace of God. And what God has done for you, he can also do for another person. Have you ever seen a sister that got admission into the university and went to school and came back after the first semester? How she handles those that she took jump with that were not able to get the result. It relates with them as somebody whose level has changed. We have class now. Just that you travel to South Africa, that is why nobody will rest. Some of us, pastor, just one miracle the God performs, nobody will hear again. You now become the Alpha and the Omega. Hear me today. Anything you have in life is a gift. For every good and perfect gift comes from above. The problem is not being blessed. The problem is, will you still be the same person when you are blessed? Will you still be doing that same assignment for God when he increases your level? Can you still be in church and handle your responsibility and keep your protocols outside when God positions you there? That is the problem we have. I don't know about the Niger Delta, but where I come from in the south, when a man makes little million, he becomes a god. He doesn't listen to anybody. No priest can stay over him. He gives a priest money. He determines what it is used for. Oh my God. Pride. But do you know what happens? There are people who should be blessed. But God decides to leave them where they are because if they get that blessing, they will take the position of God. The Bible says, He will lift the humble, but he will do what? Resist the proud. Take note. Lifting and resistance require energy. Now, what it means is that, sorry, sir, just sit down, is that he needs to rise. And when he rises, there's a shining. Arise and shine. Arise means get up. It means change your position. It means do something. Now, he needs to rise, but then, for him to rise, he still requires energy. But when he's lifted, his energy is not required. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, if I have to lift him to rise, it's easy and faster without more struggle. And then he will shine. Now, sit down. But because he, he comes to this level where he's asking God to put him, pride will come in. And instead of going to that there, the same energy that God would have used to raise him, he will use it to resist him. Now rise. Rise. He will put in efforts to rise, but he cannot. Because pride will block 
his access to the power that will lift him up. Pride will remove grace from your life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You can say better amen. Amen. Kindly take your seat as I address what I call destroyers of grace. Today, across our nation, we have people that are running after miracles and not after the God of miracles. We have people that are moving around and running after men, but please run after the word of God. We are raising people across our churches that are looking for signs and wonders, but are not looking for the knowledge they need to live right. It's one thing for you to get grace. It's another thing for you to keep it. And it's another thing for you to use it. I've gotten into a dimension of grace. And God began to open my eyes to know that grace makes demands. I call that the demands of grace. That's not for today. I have also come to know that grace can be activated. It can be provoked to begin to do things. It's been there, but it's not been working. But you can make it work. Activating grace. That's another dimension. But this day, let's deal with the destroyers of grace. So that you can understand that there are things in your life that you need to watch out for. Number one is pride. Pride. Do you know that every blessing is a gateway to pride? Every blessing attracts pride. And you have to be careful to remain humble in the place of your blessing. Anything can make you proud. A new blackberry can make you begin to answer call in church so that people can see it. And when you come out, you want to show it to people and you are looking at the one there, you are looking for those that have 3310. And you want to say, are you still using this phone? Even when there's no call, you bring it out so that people will see what you have in your hand. Brazilian hair can make you proud. And that is why you stay one place, you won't keep your head one place. You'll be shaking it like Agama Lisa. shoe can make you urinate in church four times before service is over because somebody has to see what you want to church pride 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 will make you look down on another person 